Hello humans, I'm the alien doctor, but you could call me alien, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition Beta video, taking a look at Bedrock Edition Beta 1.18.0.20. This is very exciting, this is actually the first 1.18 beta we have had here on Bedrock Edition. If you did not know, all the previous betas, whilst yes they did contain 1.18 things, those 1.18 features were locked behind these things, experimental features. There used to be another toggle here called Caves and Cliffs that has now been removed because all the Caves and Cliffs features are instead being in these actual betas. So something to point out, in this beta, the new world generation in 1.18 is currently incompatible with this option, the creation of custom biomes. So I'm actually having to create a completely separate testing world uh, just so that we can get the new caves generation for this video. However, if you have this experimental feature on, then yeah, you will not get the new world generation or specifically the new cave generation. However, I'm assuming this is gonna be removed after the beta and in the full release. But yeah, anyway, I guess this is where I'll be doing today's video. Just because I decided to enable all the experimental features on my beta test world a while ago, which is obviously a mistake because now I can't use the new caves and cliffs features or at least show you them anyway. So uh, yeah, that's why I've made a new testing world. So they fixed an issue that prevented large trees from growing below Y0. So obviously in this update, you can now go below Y0. So here we are right here on Y0 and obviously below that if you planted a tree previously it would not grow even if you bone mealed it or anything like that. That bug has now been fixed. They've also changed all generation rates to be in parity with Java Edition which is pretty nice as well. So small drip leaves will now generate in the lush cave biome and uh, I have no idea how you actually place these things down because I'm right clicking and they're not placing but that's fine but yeah either way these small drip leaves will now actually generate in the lush cave. The big ones already did but the small ones weren't. So they've updated granite, andesite and diorite so that their placement is now the same as Java Edition and something I am noticing is that they have clearly got a lot of changes that are sort of parity with Java Edition in terms of world generation, which is nice. Obviously, a couple of weeks ago now, we had the thing about seeds being the same. So it's really nice to see that other, uh, you know, features of the world is also being the same. That is just a really nice thing to see. So they tweaked peaks of small mountains to make them look a lot more jagged mountain peaks instead of a flat hilly mound. Uh, so I'm assuming this would class as like a small mountain? Perhaps? I mean, we are somewhat high up, to be fair. We're at like Y126. But yeah, anyway. Um, so they've tweaked it so it's a lot more pointed now. And you can kind of see that over there in other mountains off to the distance as well. So here's a fix that has been absolutely horrible, especially when you're netherite mining. And that is when you break a block that has fire on it previously that block would like have its invisible fire there if that makes sense so if you play if you had a block with fire on it you then destroyed that block the fire would still stay there but it would be invisible but it would also still be able to kill you and all that sort of things I actually died to this bug in alien craft season two that that was overall just a really really annoying bug that has finally been removed like as i say i've died to it like multiple times so it's so nice to see that that has finally gone so players with higher than the recommended render distance settings are now prompted to change it in the record to the recommended value now for me this only happened once when i first launched into this beta it hasn't happened any other times i've tried relaunching the game and it hasn't happened, it's only happened once. However, a pop-up appears sort of warning you if you're using a render distance higher than what the game wants you to use. So my recommended was 24, but I'm using 32. I mean, you can see there, my FPS is about 70 uh, in the full releases I get way higher than that. It's just because obviously this is a beta, but let's see, let's see. We turn down our render distance to 24 and you can see we've wow we've actually got a massive fps gain wow that, that that wasn't expected at all interesting and the other thing to point out is that it also has recommended next to whatever your recommended chunk is okay so somehow i'm actually still getting a higher frame rate than i was earlier when i was using 32 chunk render distance and now i'm using 40. so not quite sure what has gone on there 
Uh, that's an interesting little bug. So what I've got here is a really slow villager, like this guy just has slowness 255, which is the highest you can do, because there's a change to do with mob pathfinding, and that is that mobs can now pathfind over trapdoors, which I thought was already a thing. But anyway, if we place this guy, uh, other than the fact that he burns, he obviously pathfinds over the trapdoor, and uh, he's also killing our zombie, which was not part of the plan. And as you can see, he also pathfinds over the open trapdoor. We can summon in another one, just to show this to you. There we go, and that guy just falls all the way down, obviously pathfinding over the open trapdoor, which is really nice. And that would obviously also happen to the villager as well. Uh, but our villager appears to be a little bit dead. So a change to do with sweet berry bushes now. Mobs will no longer try to pathfind through sweet berry bushes. As you can see here, if we destroy this, uh, he will obviously pathfind to the villager, the zombie. Whereas when we had the sweet berry bushes there, the zombie would not. So sweet berry bushes will also actually damage mobs now properly. So we've placed that in there, like so. What? You're meant to die. Hello? Am I reading that right? Yeah, it says sweet berry bushes now damage mobs. However, this bug would appear to have not been fixed because it's not damaging the, the zombie, is it? This is so strange. Even the version that doesn't have the, like, berries on it. Like, look, it's just, it's not working at all. Uh, well, that's a strange little thing that apparently has not been fixed when it's meant to have been. Okay, or is it damaging players? So, okay, so what's happening is, is whenever I'm touching the zombie, it is damaging the zombie. So if we just grow this one up again, as you can see there, I was touching the zombie whilst it was touching the sweet berry bush, therefore it died. If we do that again, but then I move away and it like stops taking damage, but then I'm touching it, it takes damage. It's so strange and obviously that's only whilst it's touching the sweet berry bush. If I touch it normally, it does not take damage. So overall, this is a strange bug fix which clearly has not been implemented correctly. So one of the few changes with raids in this beta is that now, after a raid is finished, mobs will actually despawn. So as you can see there, a raid is obviously now happening in this village. And something else to point out is that the raid bar has actually been turned from uh, the sort of pink slash purple colour it was before to the sort of red orange colour to match Java Edition. So if I were to end this raid now by however means necessary, these pillagers would then despawn after I leave the simulation distance. However, of course, whilst the raid is happening, the pillagers won't despawn. That would just be a bit OP. It's only when the raid has finished that the pillagers will despawn after you leave the simulation distance. As well as this, these guys, which are of course the Vindicators, the guys with the really annoying axe and that are really OP, no longer spawn in raid patrols. Obviously, you occasionally get those like raid patrols where you'd obviously have those illagers that would have the banner on their back and that's how you get bad omen in the first place. Those things no longer spawn with Vindicators, which is good because these guys are OP. As well as this, the Hero of the Village effect will now actually work in all of the villagers and it will apply to every player that helps defeat the raid so the so basically the effect so it says here and it's kind of a bit confusing because it says here that the effect will remain on all the players even if they travel outside the village so does that mean the effect works on other villagers as well i'm not too sure the amount of time it takes vines to place in the overworld it's been optimized. I'm not really sure what this means. I guess previously it would take too long to place a vine in the overworld. So obviously this issue has been solved and I mean you can see here it's placing down instantly and stuff so uh, that's good. <laughs> but other than that, that is going to do it for today's Minecraft Bedrock Edition beta video. Obviously make sure to subscribe to the channel to get more of these Bedrock beta videos pretty quickly after the beta or main update releases. I also do make videos for the main updates of the game. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe today to join the Alien Empire. I'll see you in the next video coming soon. Bye.